G'day, how you going? Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video. I'm going to show you how to paint a real beach scene. I'm using a 16 by 20 stretch canvas today, something different, because I want this to be a certain project for something for myself. Okay, I'm going to make a tutorial out of it. And you'll also see the colors that have been going up the screen, which I'm going to use in this tutorial. Now I'm going to do a bit of mixing in this and gradient of the color. So as you get to see what you can do to make a rich scene with the real colors. So let's go. Now, I don't know if you can see these pencil lines. My horizon line's this high up. And I've got about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven areas where I want to gradient the colors coming towards the shore. So I've got my mask and tape there because I want to paint the sky but I want to take the tape off and just scrumble that hard edge soft again because out in the horizon we don't want a focused sharp line we want that evaporating over the curvature of the world and we want that a bit hazy. Now I'm using my French ultramarine and I'm going to get out some titanium white I'll put that there for a lot of tinting and mixing. Now I want to mix up the hazy color first. So I want to get some titanium white. That's going to be my color there. So what I'm going to do is start off with the white first. So as I know how much paint I want and I want to get some of this French ultramarine and start mixing in here. Now that's a little bit too dark. I want to get a bit more white in there. Now, It'll, if you really want to conquer a real beach scene with realistic colors, this is the video for you. And I want to get this across the horizon here. Now I'm using just a flat, I think it's a half inch brush. I'm not usually using these type of brushes, but today I am. Push it up if you have to. Love to see you take that tape off. So I'm going to take the tape off because that line I do not want hard and sharp and rigid. So I'm just going to grab my, my glove and soften that ridge of paint down now. This would have just saved me moving the canvas upside down or sideways to get that line perfect. That just allowed me to paint it the right way up. Now in here I'm going to add more French ultramarine blue there we go that's not too bad don't want it too dark because don't forget this is acrylic and acrylic does dry darker now we'll get this on there and then scramble it into that lighter color get it to there bring it up a bit more water Stroke that across. Now I want to, I'll just wet my brush and get that blending a lot better together in those two. Don't allow too much time to pass and dry for this to happen. You want to keep on to it, I feel. If you've got another way of doing it, you've done it before, that's fantastic. Now I've got me phalo blue and phalo blue, look how transparent it is. I want to get a bit of white into that just so you can see what we've got happening there turn the lights on a bit now I want to get this up there get a bit more in there I'm normally used to painting with the craft white on there as a lot of you might know now I want to get that right across the canvas there I want to blend those two together. Push it down with some X strokes if you can to force it down. Get it in there, don't worry about the top bit just yet. Now I've cleaned my brush and just slightly wet it so as I can pull this tacky kind of dry color. I'll wet it a bit more just so it's going to merge look at that now i'll start in this color here get it right into your teeth of your canvas now 
Now I've added more water to that phalo and a bit more white. Now I'm gonna push it on with me brush like this, getting it into the tooth of that canvas. Otherwise, if you just brush it over it, the, the, the potholes will burst and you'll have a little white spot there. I'm thinking about it as I'm painting, so at this moment I'm not quite sure, but when I finish the sky I'll know if I'm going to add some clouds or not. Pushing it in, pushing it in. Now what I'm doing, those haze colour, I've just picked them back up and I'm just kind of neatening them back up where I've gone a bit crazy with some of my brush strokes. This is not about speed, this is about taking your time and getting it done. I want to wash that brush and pick up the phalo blue and white again and gradually get some of that. I feel me, after looking at it, my phalo's a bit dark. That's see, I'm going to show you now just where I fix it up and why I fix it up. You'll see. That's the value I want, not over here, what you see over here. And just gradually blend it down to that French ultramarine colour down there. I'm not sure if I want to put a cloud in the sky, but I'll give it a go. I've got a filbert brush and I've got my titanium white out of the tube there neat titanium white it's not mixed with nothing and why i'm using this brush is i want to whatever i put on i want to be able to scrumble in the sky there so I'll, i'm just probably going to do something about here put it on get some kind of white stuff happening like so i don't know how i want it to look I'll billow it up a bit look at this pillowing it's mixing with that sort of damp paint get down here like so Come over here now and fix this bit up. Okay, now I want to wipe all that out of this brush, get it right out of there. And I'll use the same brush just to manipulate this and turn it into some cloud vibe floating into the sky there. Just there like that. There's bits of brighter values and duller values within it. I'll bring that down to the horizon there. I'll have a look in my monitor and see if that's if it's okay. It's a bit cliche of a cloud, but I'll try and do something different with it. I'm killing those vibrant bits and just kind of bringing more over the head vibe. Just soft, faint cloud there. Fade it up into nothing. There we go. I'm going to have a look at my monitor again and just see if I've made it worse or better. That's not too bad, it's just less. There's more, I'll get a bit more on my brush, a little bit more. I might want, so I know where I'm going now because I'm not familiar with painting clouds on a dry canvas or a damp canvas. So I'm trying to keep the bottom well shaped with what's coming off this filbert brush, but randomly, keeping it random. And now I want to just bring the top of that up into oblivion and it's pretty much a less is more cloud, if you know what I mean. Over here as well. I'm random with me brush movements as I'm doing it. And if anything, I want the bottoms of them parallel with the horizon line, so it doesn't look like it's going up. Just for the video's sake, I don't know if I'll leave this bit in the video or not, but I'm just gonna try a bit down here. Long, 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 long. And then pull the bottom down. All these clouds were just done with that filbert brush. A lot of people ask, what size brush did you use? I don't even know, it's got a number 16 on it, but look at it to the size of my finger. 
that's the size I used. I'm not going to be anal about it, it's got to be a 16 or an 18 or a 12, it's just what I've got at the time is what I can use. These clouds, I'm deliberately showing you this way of the clouds, I'll just do another one here somewhere, because they're not thick, they're not heavy, they're subtle, less is more, you can see what I mean about the less is more vibe. Getting this down into that haze, I call it the polluted horizon line. Normally I've done it with the magenta, but I'm just trying to source real vibes of colours within a sky. I'm trying to use more natural look. Like here, I want to put just something in front of that. And pull it down, just like so. It's creating a lot of distance. Pull that down into that haze. It's kind of dry and rubbery, I love it. It's working exactly how I want it to behave. Now that's me sky for now. Um, I'm trying to create that sphere shape. We've got the polluted horizon hazy distant over here. Uh, we've got it, if anything, more brighter blue at the top. And we've just got some subtle but beautiful looking clouds. Now with these sections here that I talked about in the beginning, I want to start getting those in. But first, I want to get the horizon area married to the sky and get it a subtle joint so it's not a sharp focus joint. It's just, it's just a little bit blurry, but not too blurry. So I'm going to grab me French ultramarine and some phalo blue. I'm going to grab some masking tape and get my horizon. So I can do a straight line instead of doing it freehand. Now, I've, this, that sky is dry. I've got some, I don't know, I've got some retarda there just in case I need it. Now, I want my um, French, which is this one. And I want it dark, so I want to add some phalo blue. And I'll put a little bit of white just to turn the lights on. If I can get some of that, it's very thick. There we go. So French Ultramarine and Phalo Blue there. Now I'll get this probably coming to about there, so I'll just get this painted to there. I think I need a little bit more Phalo in there. It's not quite dark enough. Come right across here now. I've put some retarder in it because I've got nothing underneath. That'll keep it wet a bit longer as I need it. Because I did have trouble with the sky, but we got the sky done, but that's the first time I've done a sky like that, but I know the principle of it. And then once I've finished putting this bit of blue on, I'm gonna take that tape off and just hit that horizon line so it's not so dark and sharp. So I'm going to pull that off and it's a bit lippy and lumpy so we're going to get a flat brush and I'll see where we can go just now everything see there I just want to grab a bit of that color if I can find it, chisel it onto my brush and you might have to come back and just do that. Like I said, this painting isn't all about speed. It's kind of just hitting that blue water paint and it's blurring up into the sky a little bit and you can see the horizon line there it's okay it now for our next deep layer of water i want to grab that phalo get a bit of and add some white to it now 
we go. And if it's too light, I can always darken it up. Now I want to bring this, so I'll get it on and get it up to that top colour there. Get it on and then blend it into that top colour there. just to get this dark a bit back in there. So I'm going to play with it. I'm running out of paint here. So I've got the phalo blue and the, the white letting it come into that retarder a bit. Now in this I've got cad yellow and cad light. So cad light's a cooler yellow than the cad medium. So we're going to add some cadmium yellow light into this just to start getting our shallower water. So it's coming from deep to less deep to shallow to less shallow. A bit more of that. Cadmium yellow light is a lot different than cadmium yellow medium. So you want the cool colours in your water and the warm colours in your sky. Now one band's there, this band's going to finish here so I want this one about here. Put the brush on and let it come down. I'll load it up again, put the brush on and tilt it down as I go and again tilt it down as I go. Now I want to come along and just dance that into the other water up there. There we go. I'm pretty much using the same brush throughout, except for when I did the clouds. Now I want to grab that pile again, get more your cad yellow, and I want more white. And more cadmium yellow. So it's coming more shallow now. So now I'm going to dig up again from here. Tilt my brush down as I go. Start again. Blend that into that other colour there. And the same on this end. Blend that into there. I will grab some French ultramarine and I want to get the wet sand colour. So I want my French ultramarine. I'm going to put a bit of retarder in there, a bit of hair there, and white. Now, the, the haze that we had in the sky, this is uh, pretty much that same colour that we first mixed over there for the first part of the horizon. This is going to make our wet sand. And I want to get this just pushed to there. I'll push it to the there first before I contaminate it all the way along. Work out where you want your wet sand. Because see if... Now I'm going to just scrumble that into that turquoise, like so. I'll wipe my brush as I go, so there's not too much turquoise bringing down into that wet sand colour. And then again I might have to pick up more just to it to happen. So like I said this is the first time I'm doing this painting but I'm teaching you the principles.
There's our wet sand. I suppose we'll get it from wet. I'll just put a bit more of that back in there. That green there. See, I'm backwards and forwards. That's what it takes. and then gingerly scramble them together. Now I've got the Oxine Purple and Cadmium Yellow Medium, so the medium more warmer. So I'll get the Dioxine, a bit of this, and some white, and we want to make, that's a bit too dark. I want to get this to that wet sand this is the damp sand now bring it down further than you need to bring it up there and smear them together now I've got the damp color there the wet color if I have to put it back now because the water's receding these are not even bands these colors they can be all different thicknesses and ins and outs now I will grab that, the wet colour and just bring it down a bit more. Now in that colour there, which is here, I want to add more white and a bit more cad yellow. Oh, not too much. More white. I'm going to start again. I added too much yellow and I destroyed it, so I need more white. Just to get that a lot more pale. And it's got a little bit more yellow in it as well. And I want to get this coming across now. I'll put a bit of retarda in there as well. And at the very front, see this colour I'm putting on now is probably a little bit too dark still. I might lighten it up. So I've added a lot more white and a little bit more yellow, not too much though. That's what buggered me up in the beginning. Yeah, that's better. You might see the difference in this. It's got that warmer feel. I can push it over that, that's fine. I'll come back with that damp color over there. Now that does have a bit more yellow in it, which is a lot better to the eye. Getting it there. And now I can probably get a better... Wipe the brush. Put it on its edge and then just scramble those two colours together as well. Just pan them back a bit. I've just got white because I just want to get pure white down here now. It's going to mix with that colour. I could have let it dry a bit more, but I'll just get you to see on camera what I'm doing. Just so. I'll let that dry in and I'll add that bit more white there anyway. I've just had a look at it. I've noticed. So you can see I've gone backwards and forwards quite a few times. You might have to or you may not have to. I just want to show you on camera the full process. I've just mixed up the more shallower green. I feel that was a bit too dark there, so I want to get that a lot more real. So I'll come across here, scramble that into there. After looking at it and looking at it, I just felt those two shallow and less shallower was not quite enough. Now I'm going to slightly wet my brush so as that transition won't be so iffity effity. There we go. Got it. So what I'll do, I'll let this dry and then we'll start putting the waves in there. 
and some reflections. Now working on the water, it's, it's dry. I've got my little dagger brush here and I'm gonna just grab some titanium white and where's some phalo, I'll just tease it a little bit so it's not pure white. Just so I can map in some waves. So from about here, I'll get some, I want a nice wave about here somewhere. Let's see if I can get this. Don't like that. There. Let's get this all. I want that reasonably straight. Get it straight there and just billow it up. Just map in some waves here. I don't want massive big waves. I want this wave. I want that white a lot thinner than that. And I want to get another one coming down. And then bring him rolling just like that. Get some other ones just in front of it. Bring that one right off the painting actually. Get some just crossing against that wet sand there. Just blocking them in for now. These are just, it's just a slight swell, it's nothing wild and it's just that beautiful stuff. Just got a little bit on my brush just to get some kind of that there in here a bit. There we go. Now that wet sand colour that I had which was um, French ultramarine blue. and some white just to get that sky reflection coming behind the waves there. But we've mapped in our wave where we want. I want to get some the sky colour just on top of the flat part of the water. So we want these nice and lineal just behind all your waves there. Getting them laced, scalloped, hitting the surface of that water there. Down here, where you see the top of the water, you'll see all this. Don't want them too fat. Get some of it out there. Now see here, I'm going to make a tube of the wave there like I've done here, you'll see it later on. But I'm kind of creating tubes of waves there with where I'm not putting this colour. Just get some of this out here as well. Yeah, I've got some clouds there, I could probably get a bit of this reflection of the cloud there. About there. Where else? Got a little bits over here. Because that wet sand is going to show a lot of glare and reflection. 
I'm just putting it randomly to be quite honest, roughly above where the clouds are. Now I want the cadmium yellow light, not the medium. Put the light as a cool colour in your water. And the turquoise colour that we had mixed up, I want to get this and a bit of that in there. I got the cadmium yellow light and I mixed it with our phalo blue and the white French ultramarine. Got the turquoise colour. Just out here, you want to get the face of these waves, a bit of light coming through there. too heavy I'm just scrambling it in to show it's showing just so it's showing the light coming through the face of that wave put it on a bit of that color going on Some bits down here, like this little one here. Where did I draw another one here? Now I will get a bit more white into that. A little bit more yellow, make it more, a lot more lighter. And just come in the guts of that colour you just put on there previously like that. Now getting some more of the cadmium yellow light and making that a lot more shallow. And we'll get some of this in here. Probably get a burn of that in there maybe. The thinnest water has got this light hitting it. The light's coming through it. Now I've got some burn umber here, just a little bit there. And we're going to put some shadows to the wave we put out there. So just get it in front of your wave there. Don't want too much on your brush, you just want it gingerly. That's too heavy there, I'm feeling. Just in front of the wave like that. Because whether you know it or not, waves do cast Shadows, they reflect light, they're doing all sorts of things out there. I've got that little dark there, so I've just lightened it up a bit. It was a bit too dark and heavy, I feel. So I've just added the slightest bit of white into it. Not too much. Now I've got some uh burn umber there, a little bit of phalo blue and a little bit of white just so we've got that silvery blue and this whitewash let me see just what the shadow is under here So 
So grab this colour, done our whitewash there, and under these bits here, we've got this dark. I'm going to fill it up into some of that white there because that was a bit too stark when I put it on there. And when we add the actual whitewash, this will add the depth within it. It's like a silvery blue kind of grey, I don't know. load your brush, wipe it off your brush and then just gradually powder like you'd like a woman puts their powder on their face, you just gradually build it up. Now that colour I mixed, I'm just going to get a heap of white and I want to taint it with that. A bit more. So this will be the white on me waves but I want it this tainted so as I can really spark it with some pure white later. So this will look white on the painting. And we'll start over here because this is going to add, get all this splashing. When you add the pure white this is going to add like volume and dimension and the thickness and fluffiness of that thick soapy sudsy water. Don't kill that dark shadow you've placed under there, otherwise you'll just simply have to put it back. And some suds here, over that shadow, coming back. Over that dark bit, suds in it back into the There we go. Just so it looks like a thick blanket of whitewash just filming over that there. Now I'm just grabbing pure white and here and there getting it over that shadowy colour and that tainted white that we put there. Don't destroy all that tainted white otherwise you'll lose the volume of this smashing fluffy white water. And scatter, you know, the edge of your wave if you like. Get water, the wind's hitting it up there and Scatter it down there. That shadow colour there, like I'm just looking at this one as an example, if you feel you've lost too much of it, just simply put it back. Once I put a big thick line here, I'm going to try and get the wind just pushing a bit of that thick stuff up into the sky as well. Getting some pure white to cover that there. I 
I'm trying to hide a mistake. Let me see in the monitor how I went. Not bad, I've kind of seen it, and I'm, I do know from seeing previous pictures, something like that needs something splashing down here as well. Because it was such a heavy flopping splob of water. Yes, so now after looking at that as well, because the nice bit of wind hit something there, it's just higher. Now I only put this bit here because I feel I've made a mistake with this big white line. I'm just using a small detail brush, but these detail brushes, they damage quite easily, I've noticed. Constantly going through them. Just pure white here. See, so all that green we put there, this that's inside this wave. We've got our shadow there. It's just slight waves. I love little waves. If I'm going to paint an ocean scene, I prefer if I'm going to hang it on my wall, just have subtle little waves, nothing too massive and crazy. That's just how I feel. I feel less is more. Now, if you look over here, we've got this looking okay. Uh, I might put a bit more light in there because the light will be coming through. But over here, I want to fix that just with pure white again, same brush and the same method. So I'm finding that line, coming across that line and then finding something that's just gotten splashed up into the sky. There's bits of wave just getting caught by the wind. And now we can finish getting that quite wind hitting, ready to drop and curl. And you can see how that's just made more dramatic. I'll kill that blob a bit, it's too heavy. Now if you like what you see here, give me a comment, tell me who you are, where you're from, have you been watching me a while? Just a simple hello is well appreciated. Because I just want some water edge here. I just had a look, I've, I've grabbed this hazy colour. Where the main white bits are, I feel I might want to put a bit of um, reflection down there. And over here. that brush a bit before I go that way just so as I can do that now like I said before I feel some of it got lost here from the clouds just so that wet sand looks really wet Feel I got it back. I don't know if it'll work, but we can probably try and put a a nice. Where are we? Glistening vibe here. Spew it in. I'm just kind of see like here we've got some maybe here um, I don't 
don't want it too bright, but I want it enough where it's just sitting there like light, glistening. I do a a four four stroke star kind of thing. And what I'm doing just at the edge of the um, the wet sand is probably getting the odd one here, just putting it on and rubbing it down, putting it on and rubbing it down and then just putting the slightest cross across it. I'm just going to sign the bottom corner of this. And I want to thank my YouTube members who hit the join tab below and support my channel every month. Much appreciated. And I also want to thank my patrons who support me every month for the price of a cup of coffee. Now I can't whack a frame on this because it's a stretch canvas and it's a different size to my normal tutorials. There we go, that's not too shabby. We've got a decent realistic ocean just coming through onto the sand and we've indicated that that sand's wet. If you're in an intermediate or an advanced and you want to start doing this kind of stuff, Work out the fundamentals of colours, learn and practice because I know you can do it. Well that was exciting, different and a lot of fun for me. I hope it was a lot of fun for you also. Tell your friends if you like what I'm doing but if you don't you tell everybody. Also have a look at this other video of mine and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Goodbye, good luck and good on you.